Hello everyone. Here's a story we've often heard of. Somebody starting business from their home at a desk, struggling to get the business going and eventually starting and successfully running a multi-million dollar business. Now we have a twist in the story. What if you listen to somebody who's already had an established business and decides to quit all of it to move into a very different space and start all over again. Well, that is a story of courage and it requires a lot of persistence to leave what you're doing and to start something all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the all new episode of The Icon. And today we have with us the man of the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the founder, managing director and CEO of Health Careers International, Mr. Bijo Kunamurapa. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the show. Bijo, your story is the one that has confidence printed all over it. I don't know how you do it. Having a business set up in Malaysia, running it successfully and then finally deciding that, no, I'm going to move down under for my family and starting it all over again. Well, I, I, would, I would have panicked. I would have, I would have had a heart attack right there. How do you do it, Bijo? The story is basically... I was in engineering area. I was working in the engineering construction industry in Malaysia and established a business in that area. When my family decided to move to Australia and uh, I had to be with my family anyway. So when I came here, I initially tried to get jobs in the engineering industry, but unfortunately I couldn't find a job. Right. So that led me to go back to uh, a job which I done for uh, Australian, uh, Austin Hospital basically mm -hmm. in Melbourne. Mm -hmm recruiting nurses in 2003 while I was in Malaysia. So I went back to the client and uh, asked whether they need more nurses and they were actually in need of nurses. So I have set up a new business here, which is Healthcare is International, which started uh, bringing nurses from overseas and uh, get them trained and uh, place them in Australia. So that's an opportunity and uh, that's totally outside my experience or knowledge. And uh, I try to work on it and that's it, the story begins. Beautiful. Uh, Bijou, for, for the icon, we usually find people who are rare gems like you. Now, what surprises me is that you have a engineering background, like what you said. You are a mechanical engineer by qualification. Um, you were successfully running a construction-based business uh, and mineral trading in Malaysia. Now, moving into Australia, you started something like recruiting uh, nurses to Australia. And if finally, you're at a juncture where you're providing one of the best nursing educations that the country can provide. Mm -hmm. um, how did that happen from a, me a mechanical engineering background to an educational institute? Yeah, I actually, uh, as the journey continues, mm -hmm. every day when we move forward, like, you know, it's like a, if you're driving in a car, you can see only what in front of you. So as you move, and uh, you reach new areas, you see new opportunities. Yeah. So same thing, you know, this is a journey I'm continuing. And uh, every day I find a lot of opportunities within uh, the education space. So in health science, uh, not many colleges are offering nursing courses and uh, also uh, other courses like social work and other courses. There is most of the programs are uh, offered by universities in Australia. So we are developing a boutique institute which is really specialized in nursing and uh, that journey is continuing Beautiful. and it's actually excite you every day well i like that concept where you said that you know uh, you you're on a journey and you're taking people with you on this journey what uh, what's inspiring about your journey is you're just not carrying on with that journey just the way you came but you're also pulling in so many elements so many people you're supporting them through that journey and um, I understand that you've brought in close to 20,000 nurses into Australia through your programs and that means uh, close to 20,000 people's livelihood have been in enhanced by the support of HCI uh, I also know that you are you have about 500 staff globally 
well, it's not easy to handle such a large volume of staff, especially uh, when we consider the last two years, which has been very challenging for most businesses. Uh, we know that you know the border closure had you know had a huge impact on what we could have done and where we where we would have been. And in spite of the global challenge about uh, the lack of nurses or the requirement of nurses, um, HCI still continued to strive and. Uh, the beauty is that you even uh, ventured into you know areas that others don't usually. Uh, like for example, I'm always uh, fascinated by health ovations. It's one of your departments where you focus on research-based learning. Tell us a little bit about health ovation. Yeah. Basically, what excites me is uh, lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. So every every day. By working on various areas, uh, you're actually learning yourself into new knowledge. So I have a really, I, 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 I strongly believe that lifelong learning is important for uh, everybody to be successful. Learning could be formal, informal, or non-formal either way, but you need to continue maybe reading a book or uh, maybe attending some seminars. Everything is learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And with the knowledge, and uh, with the challenges everybody face in a day, in, a, in your lifetime, you also become innovative. Yep. Basically, new ideas come to you, that is innovation. Mm -hmm. But that innovation required also some uh, foundation by doing the research to see whether it is already there or not. Absolutely. What we can do with this idea, how can we make it a real uh, facility or real op outcome to people. Mm -hmm. to provide a service or product or anything. So the research is foundation for human growth. So everything comes through new ideas, new knowledge, new products, new services. And that all need to be also analyzed to see how can be efficiently done it. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenging area where you have no certainty whether you're going to be successful or failure. And many private institutions, uh, I believe in Australia, not focus on research, whereas HCI decided to be in the research space. And uh, our research division is Health Ovation, which we started in the COVID time, which is 2020 when we started in our Melbourne office here. And uh, we are currently doing research into robotics in independent living. So that is our first project. And I'm hoping that we should be able to solve some of the problem for our elderly community globally, you know, in our way. Well, what, uh, what I've understood is like most uh, successful businessmen uh, have adopted different, different sort of strategies. And uh, one of the most uh, iconic personalities, uh, Bill Gates, when he was 21 and became a billionaire, said that he was very conservative in his approach. Uh, I understand that you are at a much later stage in your life uh, than 21. But uh, in spite of being at that juncture in your life where I know your daughter is getting married, so you have a lot of responsibilities on your shoulder, I don't think I don't, I don't know if you're thinking, okay, my responsibility is off my shoulder by the time my daughter is getting married. But uh, at this kind of a juncture, how do you manage to take so much of risk and you know go ahead with uh, wild and crazy ideas, if I can say so? Yeah, basically, you said about successful business. Mm -hmm. So I have a belief that you know there is no. I mean, success is always there. Yep. It could be fast, it could be slow, it could take time. Basically, the opposite of success is not failure, it is growth. You may not be successfully you know, growing in that aspect, but you are growing because you're building your strength. So every failure also opportunity for growth. So there is no real failure. As long as we learn from failure, we can continue to grow. So my belief is that uh, everybody is successful. How beautiful, you know what you just said right now, let me, I'm just trying to think that in the opposite of success is not failure, but it's growth. Wow, I think this is something that our viewers can actually take in for today because uh, that means a lot because everyone fears uh, what is called failure and then you believe that it's not failure, but it's a, st it's a way that you grow. Yeah. It is so much more beautiful. Like I've, I've often heard people say uh, it's a learning process. But you're not even saying it's a learning process. You say it's a growth. It's a part of growth. And that is so beautiful. Uh, I understand you are where you are because of the way you think. Beautiful. Now, uh, talking about how we have created this model, I understand that uh, 
the you started the master of nursing program sometime uh, last year yeah. and that was again a very crucial time uh, globally because uh, there was so much of confusion happening around starting a new course when borders were restricted and closed wasn't an easy decision and you're competing with uh, yeah, universities and uh, there's probably only a handful of uh, institutions that are not universities who have ventured into that kind of space. Uh, how do you get that drive to compete with these kind of universities to set up a space where you provide uh, education at that level? Yeah, basically uh, we as an institute, mm -hmm. we decided to go into all level of education that is PhD, up to PhD. Mm -hmm. So this is our stepping stone onto next level. So we 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 are currently working on the Doctor of Nursing program, and I'm hoping by next year it will be launching in uh, IHM. And the the goal of IHM is to be a university college by 2030. So that is basically offering specifically nursing courses, and we want to be a boutique provider in this space. We can't be a university like in terms of volume. Because in Australia, all the universities are so big. They have 50,000 students, 30,000 students in ca on campus. And uh, we want to be a niche provider in health science, specifically in the nursing area. So in terms of uh, that, we are now building our capability by having uh, state-of-the-art simulation facilities. So all our campus are really equipped with the, the best simulation facility, which some of the universities are currently sharing with us. So I'm so proud to see that university students are using our facilities. So that's a real uh, thing happening today. Well, Vijay, ap apart from being an education provider, uh, you don't cease to educate yourself or you don't cease to stop learning. And I know that you're pursuing a PhD in educational governance. Oh, it's fascinating, you know, for somebody like you still still ensuring that, you know, you are on top of the game, you know, upskilling yourself. Uh, you've always found education to play an integral part of, uh, of a person's being. And perhaps that's why the motto of uh, IHM says enhancing life through uh, education. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you, do you really believe that tertiary education or skill, skill enhancement enhances somebody's life? Or is that, is that the way to go? Is that the way we look at future? Yeah. Basically, what I'm, I'm just thinking is like a, I, I fully believe in lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. So being an entrepreneur, the, anybody, I mean, I, this is actually, you know, I could share my views on this area. A lot of people now, young generation, they all want to be entrepreneur. Mostly people are looking into uh, self-employed rather than employed by third party or other companies. That's the main thing everybody wants to do. What I can say is basically it's a very good uh, uh, process, but only advice will be to make sure that you continue to learn. Because being a leader of an organization, it is your capacity is the organization capacity. If organization need to grow, you need to grow. If you don't learn, you can't grow, of course, it will limit the organization itself. So my case, I am in the education space and we want to be university college. And I decided to do the PhD because I work with a lot of people who got PhD already. That is a top qualification. So I thought it is important for me to grow to understand that. Not just for because the qualification to get it, the name of the title mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. What I was doing the journey is like you enjoy that journey, like you know you you learn a lot. In doing that uh, PhD journey, I, I I can say that it built my confidence, it built my ability in terms of uh, you know uh, working in the education space. So really, I think it really benefiting me every day. So to me. Uh, anybody want to be an entrepreneur, one of the things I will advise them is never stop learning. You have to read, like most of the big successful people say they have read a book a day. So this kind of things is helping them. It's not necessary formal learning. The learning is happens, you can just read book, you can go and attend seminars, you can do, discuss with uh, your mentors, you learn. So you find some mentors, work with them and then help, help you improve yourself. But what inspires uh, me from your journey and your story is that you don't you don't cease to uh, share your knowledge or share your learning with others. Well, particularly in the case where I, I've seen your blurb on uh, winning the uh, 
award, award being awarded the uh, fellowship, the principal fellowship by Advance HE. And then you did write a blurb on you know how one can you know reach to that space. Not not usually many people struggle or take take the trouble. I wouldn't say struggle. Take the trouble to do something like that. You know, I I've got it now. I make my way clear, but. I, I don't really want to share the knowledge with somebody else, but you are somebody who's always taken that effort to say that, hey, I did it this way. Why don't you try it? It's this is worth a try. You've always shown that way. You've always, you know, taken people along with you on that journey, and you've always made sure that they grow along with you. And uh, during our chat just before uh, we started filming this interview, you also mentioned about an app that you created uh, yeah. towards that. Could you let let us know a little more about it? I'm sure the audience would love to know about it. Okay. No problem. Uh, I, I actually write uh, a reflection on my fellowship journey yeah. in uh, LinkedIn. That day morning when I thought, uh, okay, uh, rather than just saying that I got fellowship, I will say, you know, because I see a lot of people publishing the certificates, everything in, uh, in LinkedIn and all. So I decided to do it a little bit more informative as well as useful to people. So that's why I actually write that uh, one page article. And in that, I also shared the secret. It's all about uh, keeping track of what you're doing because many people deserve fellowship but they may not know even how to the access pathway. the path mm -hmm. so I believe a lot of our in, in I was more thinking about our own staff who do, do administration work right uh, who does maybe you know teaching resources teaching support because they think this is all for professors or people who got PhD to apply for this kind of things it's not necessarily so I don't have PhD the same way there is many fellowships are available to recognize uh, people's uh, success or support to community. So even if you support students to uh, learn and you may be a, a mentor, you may be doing some uh, buddy assist, you know, support for students, everything is counted for. How do you impact other people's life? That's all count here mm -hmm. in fellowship. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we do a lot of things in life and we forget what we've done. And I believe if we know what is the requirements, we can start tracking it. So I thought you need an app to manage it. So we, since we do have a software division, which is MWT technology, I speak to the team and then they start working towards building a lifelong learning portfolio. It's similar to e-portfolio, but a little bit more than that. The idea is basically, when you start reflecting your journey, your knowledge, learning, everything, the idea is to use this reflection into maybe future for fellowships or maybe for recognition of prior learning because in Australia every education institute provide recognition of prior learning but you need to keep all track of your learning otherwise yeah. you can't be getting it it's hard Absolutely. so this tool is developed for free to people it's available on the website which is called llportfolio.com and uh, the idea is basically uh, I believe uh, every student you know from their year 11 or 10 or childhood itself they can put and I'm also thinking that if you can put your purpose in life and where you want to be you know in the next 10 years then you can start walking towards it so I am thinking if you if anybody want to be successful in life they need to make some planning with the planning they could be better reach there so this tool is free and this will be my contribution to the society in terms of uh, continue their life learning learning and uh, improve their lives. Well, talking about planning, I, I must tell the audience that I've been lucky to uh, I interact with this gen gentleman for, on a couple of occasions. And I've always noticed one thing, that most of the replies to my emails come early in the morning, as early as about 5.30 a.m. Uh, so this is something that I'm, I'm sure my viewers would love to know about. How do you do this? Like, is this a routine to start early in the morning, or have you set it up uh, recently? What do you? How do you do it? Okay. <laughs> Basically, I'm a morning person. Mm -hmm. So some people are evening person, and people and some people are morning. And I comes to the category of morning person. So I do start my morning at four o'clock, and uh, what I normally do having a coffee, and then maybe start reflecting on what to do that day. And yeah. uh, I have some study time, reading time. So up to 6, 6.30 I will be, you know, continuing this in the morning and then I will also look at some email response and all to make sure that I'm on top of my day. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that I start my rest of my preparation for going to work. So it took at least two hours before I can leave the office to home, which includes a bit of uh, exercise. So I normally do every day 
bit of jogging for 3 kilometers a day mm -hmm. and i go for saturdays for 10 km jogging every weekend with my friends with, with my colleagues who is actually in the office so these are things make me happy enjoyable and i think in australia we are so lucky to be here because we got every facility it's we sometimes consider granted but uh, which is not available in many part of the world so i think being in australia this is the best thing we can see uh, gratefulness is such a important trait not everyone uh, remembers to be grateful or uh, it is so essential as a you know character building exercise to be grateful for what we are or where we are and who we are um, you just reflected on that and you know uh, it's it's beautiful to understand that people such as uh, such as yourself are actually you know taking time to reflect turn back and look at that journey and appreciate life as it is uh, which again uh, brings me to another one of the interesting conversations I've had with you where you mentioned about eating less. Um, well, because, because the viewers of the icon are usually looking at something that inspires them from personalities such as yourself. What is it about eating less? People want to be merry, eat a lot, enjoy, enjoy the freedom that life gives you. And you're telling about eating less. Tell us about this philosophy. Yeah. Uh, I can share this. Sure. <laughs> this, this is my life and uh, I'm just sharing what happened to me. So my mom had diabetes mm -hmm. for a very long time, maybe 20, 25 years, as far as I know. She's in medication for a long time and sadly she passed away last year. But uh, what I was uh, thinking for last 20 years when I was in Malaysia itself, I started exercise, reduce my, I, I won't take sugar in the coffee. Those kind of things is normally we do, but whatever we do, Maybe by aging, we get uh, cholesterol and other diseases, which is definitely following you. Whatever uh, precautions we do, exercise, all kind of things. And I, I've been informed by one of my friend, who is in Melbourne, about one practice he does is uh, fasting. So I was not aware of that fasting methodology, sorry, or intermittent fasting. My son used to tell me he's a dietitian. But I don't practice it because I don't think it's all workable for anybody because morning, if you don't <laughs> eat breakfast, how can you survive? So by 10 o'clock, you feel already hungry and uh, you know, headache and everything if you don't really eat. So, but my friend told me, he can share my book on diet mm -hmm. and uh, fasting, you know. So it's not dieting, it's for fasting. And I, as I, you know, without much motivation, I just start reading the book. As I read the book, I... I start learning, you know, the beauty, the, 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 the possibility of even reversing diabetics through mm -hmm. fasting. Yeah. Which I never thought because I always I heard is once you are in diabetics and once you got medication, you You're have to continue diabetic. for life. <laughs> you ended up with the more, you know, acute uh, conditions, uh, conditions you, yeah. and you die. Mm -hmm. So diabetes is not going to leave you. So this book is actually written by a famous uh, dietitian. He's actually, his name is uh, Dr. Fong from Canada and he he write this book and i read the book and I, he got a couple of other books so by more reading and i start practicing slowly and uh, reduce my uh, you know breakfast i delay to 10 o'clock then slowly reduce to 12 o'clock or now i only take after one o'clock so basically if you eat between that uh, intermittent fasting which is eight hours and 16 hours you eat in 18 hours and I do this for the last one and a half years and actually I felt so energetic. I could do everything I normally do like you know walking, exercise, everything. On top I lost some weight and I'm not much feel good every day and uh, I could be more productive. And now my journey is to make it maybe you know 20 hours uh, window mm -hmm. by, next, by another year. At the end of this year I'll be only eating four hours window. Wow. So <laughs> I'm, it's all possible for everybody. And I believe uh, we, we can, very hard for us to control calories and uh, see what is in the food to think and we want to eat what we like to eat. So this methodology doesn't limit you from what you're eating, only the time you eat. So I find it so easy to practice because if I want to eat ice cream, I can eat ice cream, <laughs> but in that window. Right. So that's it. Well, Vijay, I know you're a very voracious reader. Uh, tell us about that one book that perhaps changed your life. Okay. 
I, I continue to read books, and uh, this is the book actually changed my life. It's uh, by Sig Sigler, and the book is called See You at the Top. Mm -hmm. I read this book in uh, 1998 when I was in Malaysia in a construction work in the project site. So one of my colleagues who actually gifted this book to me, and he said, you will like it. So I, I, I'm so uh, thankful to him. Actually, that book changed my life. So it gave me courage to think about entrepreneurship. It thought, it teach me you can be beyond what you are. So there is no limit for any person. So many people like me who done her diploma in, uh, in, in my time in, in the 80s in polytechnics and uh, they think that we can't do more. We are limited by our qualification. Our qualification only this much. So we can only do this. So by doing this book, reading this book, I thought, yeah, we could do better than what I am thinking of. And I actually having a lot of knowledge and skills because I like technology and I, I learn a lot through technology. And I, I was start thinking beyond my, my roles or positions and start working differently. So that, that leads to setting up institutions in Australia and Malaysia. Well, that India. actually answers my first question to you about courage and you being you know, the epitome of courage or you being the personification of courage. That was so great and fascinating talking to you, Bijou. Um, I'm sure that most of our viewers, all our viewers, in fact, would have been so inspired by this journey and they definitely want to learn more. But pressed on time, unfortunately, I'd love to talk to you, but um, we have to say goodbye right now, but only to promise to catch up very soon again. Thank you so much for joining us on Thank the Icon. Thank you, Sama. Thank you for being, you know, inviting me. Thank you. Our pleasure.